And we predict the weather, like I know most of us who have, uh, you know, iPhones or, you know, Androids uh, that are like iPhones, and you can look up and you'll give, it gives it about a week, you know, uh, when, when it's going to rain, when it's going to snow, when the sun's coming out. But what about earthquakes, hurricanes, well, let's, tornadoes? Let's get too complicated. You want to take one thing at a time. Let, let's look at the issue of weather. Okay. After the Second World War, there were serious thoughts given to weather prediction. They believed seriously that they could predict weather for a year. And there was a man who was then at the National Bureau of Standards, I think, I may be mistaken, or the National Weather Bureau, uh, named Lorenz, who thought this indeed was the case. And what he did, he took a series of equations that represented a weather circulation pattern and put these into a computer. There were, in this case, a series of equations, and he modestly went about finding near-term solutions, and they all worked out well. I mean, he, he found that, yeah, they had solutions that could predict the weather for about five days thus far. Well, why not go further? Let's go on. This looks successful. Let's do this. Unfortunately, he came back one weekend and found out he had a variety of solutions. This was incomprehensible. What did he do? He went back to the equations and he began to check the equations. He had essentially three equations that represented weather and where the near-term solutions were correct were in very near to the original input data. Well, I would say that they were not far from his initial set of conditions. He could go out so far, and yes, it agreed with. However, he found that if he let it go some much further, the results were very different, that they did not reproduce themselves. Now, why? One of the things he discovered was that the equations themselves were what he began to realize were nonlinear. And when you have nonlinear sets of equations, you get strange solutions. Most of our mathematics today deal with what I call linear solutions. I mean, we can do lots of things with mathematics and predicting and doing all kinds of things, but only in the near term. What do you mean by the near term? The near term means that like if you extend, if you have, if you have long-term effects, and then solutions with solutions, let's say, with the input data goes further and further out, that you want to get results further and further out in the solution. It doesn't work as easily. It finds that we have what is called bifurcation, which is splitting of the solutions. We have incomprehensible answers to questions that we sort of, we change the initial conditions slightly. But David, what I don't understand is how can we predict what the weather is for the week? Let's say the week. The, the week okay. is the near term. Okay, but we can't predict, you know, like in say California where they have earthquakes. Well, they that's can't a different, predict. that's not weather. That's something else. So let's, what is let's that? Leave, well, what is that? Let's then? leave, uh, you know, uh, yeah. uh, earth. Uh, consequences out of it. They're we're not mad. talking about earthquake. We're not talking about volcanoes. We're talking about weather. Okay, so weather uh, is the atmosphere around right. the earth. So does that have so earthquakes is something that happens? But that earthquakes are a different problem entirely How because did you have to. Well, how, first of all, an well, earthquake would seem to me. Can one, the, a chaos theory of some kind apply to not, problems we, like we this? Don't, chaos theory is not a predictive tool. It's a, it's a way of thinking about the process. Right. Okay, so we, as yet, chaos theory is not implicated in every problem we think of. It can't be applied easily. There are some things that we can apply it to. We know we can do certain things with chaos theory, which is a theory, again, I said, of uncertainty. Right. <clears throat> really. For example, uh, there's one problem in physical science that is of serious consequence to what I call hydrodynamicists, people who think about water and the way water behaves, flowing water. We know two things about the way water behaves. We have water that flows smoothly 
along a surface, and we call that laminar flow. Okay. And then we have another region where there seems to be in a stream flowing down a gully, it suddenly looks like it becomes turbulent. But it's, it's very mixed up with froth and everything else going on. Why? We cannot predict the, it, the uh, essentially uh, the point at which this turbulence occurs. We have no theory that allows us to do it. Yes, and you're talking about more like hurricanes then. Uh, hurricanes? We can, hurricanes have the more factors that are introduced mm -hmm. into a theory, the more difficult it becomes to solve the problem. As a result, we see now, for example, and someone may call me on this, is that we have a model of the Earth's atmosphere on which we base a lot of our information, predictive information, about climate change. Now, here is a system that is so complicated that it depends on, do you know every aspect of the, uh, let's say, of the variables that are introduced into the system. Do you know everything about it? Well, the problem is beginning to be clear that we don't. So when there are people who are saying, well, you know, I don't believe in climate change, or I do, there is some basic evidence why they're saying that. These are not people that are stupid. They're not people that are just objecting to what someone else says. That, you know, that here we are in a, a region of terrible uncertainty in what the consequences of predictions are for weather change or weather or climate change. Mm -hmm. We see things now, we put those down and attribute those to the effect of climate change. But we have no way of serious solutions. We have a linear solution. The current model of a climate change model is a circulation model of atmosphere around the Earth. And we have and what does that include? My God, I think of the variables, temperature, pressure, uh, particulates, every kind of thing, cities emanating heat into the atmosphere. All of these things affect climate change as well as what else we see on the grand scale, which have been primarily input and uh, I'd call them uh, <coughs> uh, uh, climate gases. Or yeah, because, greenhouse gases. Because there's those, all the people that believe in climate change, they don't believe in climate change. You don't know what is real. Well, the problem is the public doesn't know anything. The public is aghast at what they hear. Okay. But we're not, well, you're saying we're not well, we, about we're, the not, we're not well informed. You're yes. not because okay. most people do not have any scientific background of understanding. But scientists themselves differ on their points of view and always have. So when they say that they attribute this to X and they have data that proves it, for example, over a period of many years to say this is what has happened, this is a result, of, we can say, yeah, that is a fact of science. For example, we know we can measure certain things in climate change. We can measure carbon dioxide concentrations in the atmosphere. We can realize that from a period of time from 1900 until now, there has been a noticeable increase in carbon dioxide. We also recognize that carbon dioxide is what is called a gas that absorbs radiation. Okay, so that the kind, essentially what we're saying is what we know now is that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere acts like a blanket that inhibits gases or heat from radiating outward. Now they say, what about inward? Well, going inward is a very different problem in radiation theory that requires us to understand that it can absorb, but it can't reflect. Now, can the chaos theory that we talked about, how, can that be presented? Is there a model uh, chaos here? Chaos theory at the present time, it's uncertain what it really can do. It's in its very elemental state at the present time. We know things about it. We know certain things that it does. We know that overall in chaos, there's some order. I mean, we've learned a lot of things from it, but we have not applied it to anything in particular. Why, what it attracted you to it? Because I know you, I you wrote the paper. I am interested in the concept of uncertainty. As an engineer, I had been responsible for designing 
plant, etc. Okay, operating mm -hmm. refinery. Now, in that, one has to know many things. And the problems you have in refineries is, A, you're dealing with highly flammable materials that you're processing. And you would like to ensure that you don't have an explosion or in a fire in that plant. So you have to mm -hmm. design it with certain safety features. Now, the, the, the longer we work with it, the more we learn. Because earlier in the, in the time of, let's say, of refinery operation, there were many explosions. I mean, people don't realize that. That were, you know, plants were blowing up. Mm -hmm. We had all kinds of explosions going on that everyone thought they had technically learned everything about it, and yet they didn't know much. What about even, uh, I mean, we're not talking about explosions right now, but, you know, there were porches, you know, in a lot of por there are a lot of porches in Chicago attached to the apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. And people, uh, did they, when they did it, did they design it that only two people can go on the porch? But here, the porches that were coming down, because people had parties on the porches, they may have about 20, 25 people, and the porch came tumbling down. I, so, my, own ex my own feeling about it, my daughter was caught in one of those accidents. You're kidding. See, I didn't this even know was, that, uh, and here we are talking down about on it. Ridge Road near Devon. They, were, they had a party on the porch, mm -hmm. and the porch collapsed. They, fortunately, she was in okay shape. The problem is that man does not anticipate every eventuality. But they didn't anticipate that more than two people or three people would end up going on the porch. They didn't build it for... Well, let, let's, let's, let's look at the And we technology. only have a couple of minutes to, let's look to at do the this technology. chaos theory on this. Let's look at, the, at, the, at uh, what has happened in aircraft transportation. You don't hear of a plane crashing frequently anymore, do you? Not as much. No. no. In fact, for the most part, the safety level is so great that really very few aircraft have essentially crashed Good. in the time we have been around. Uh, but as I said earlier, we used to believe it was three crashes a week, a month, wow, or a year, I would say. Yeah. Three okay. crashes a year would occur okay. in any right. individual airline. So we did learn a lot. We began to use various techniques, namely risk analysis that we hadn't used before, and the aircraft industry was primary in one of them because of the frequency and the real and fatalities in the crash. And risk analysis is risk analysis. You can tell in a few this, minutes. What to risk risk analysis, analysis basically is probability theory, the probability of some event happening. Design something and then also testing it. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the problems today is we don't test as much as we used to because it's too expensive. So we use a, 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 a mathematical model in the computer to give us the answer. This is a problem, and we still find there are areas we cannot rely on this. There's errors in the computer. Yeah, right. The computer has limitations mm -hmm. because there's the old idea is that uh, garbage in equals garbage out. Mm -hmm. okay? That's funny. That's the way right. the computer works. And if we don't understand it's what we put in, is the consequence of what we get out. So the, the, the idea here is we have just we have to wrap up right now and I want to thank you for coming, David. We got so much work to do. Look at all the papers we have here and we have just touched just touched it lightly. And I do want to welcome you back, but I think the viewers have to know that um, the chaos theory is basically you have to go beyond just what it looks like. You got to do all the risk that could be involved. You could, when people design things, they have to design things for not how just lo things look, but what can happen. There are many other variables that can happen uh, besides how it looks, and you got to know those variables, and that's basically in some of the